You could wait for money to start falling from the sky, or you could head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, and amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook and Capital OTB are the better choice. This is the OTB Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, 16 races to bring you from seven different venues. And we're going to kick it off at Tampa Bay Downs, their biggest day of the year, uh, Tampa Bay Derby Day. But we're going to kick it off with three-year-old fillies in the Sun Coast. Wait till dawn for Todd Pletcher, the six-to-five favorite. And they're off. Away and running, Seguaya. Is away alertly and gunning for the early lead. And there goes Melrose Woods moving up now. Second, four still in nature. We'll go to the turn three abreast and racing third in the last turn away is the late running Modulate. Around the clubhouse turn they go. The Southern Cal Invader, Melrose Woods, now takes the lead by two. Seguaya on the outside is their second. The favorite, Wait Till Dawn, tucked in nicely toward the rail third. She's being shuttled by Force to Nature on the outside, fourth. Then we go back to Macanuda. The Great Philly is toward the rail, fifth. Locally based Mercy Lou on the outside, sixth, and Modulate is the trader, but it's only five links from front to back as they settle for their journey up the backstretch. Melrose Woods and Lascano calling the shots up front and have the lead three parts of a length. Seguari on the outside is second. Wait till Don is toward the rail third. Force to the nature on the outside fourth. Then we go back to Mercy Lou. She's going for a run now fifth. A length and a half farther back. Macanuda is sixth and still nothing from Modulate. A very compact field with three furlongs still to run. Melrose Woods is toward the rail. Seguaria is right back at her now second. Force to the nature is third. Wait till Don. And Castellano has a ton of horse and awaits racing room third. Mercy Lou is under an all-out drive now racing along fourth as they turn for home. Seguari on the outside and toward the rail is Melrose Woods. Wait till Don has had a rough trip and still looks for racing room. Inside the final for Don, Melrose Wood. Here comes Wait till Don on the outside. She's in full stride. Seguari between horses. Down to the wire. Seguari. Wait till Don. Wait till Don with a trouble trip but she's still up in time to take it by a half a length. Seguari raced erratically through the stretch. She'll settle for second and Mel Rosewoods was third, running time on the board, 140 and two. And yes, the teletimer, ladies and gentlemen, is accurate. Very, very rare over the course of the year on horses and courses. We get a stakes race run at a mile 40 yards. But Saturday afternoon, the 32nd running of the Stonewall Farm Ocala Suncoast Stakes goes to Wait Till Dawn, who was the 6-5 to five favorite. And you saw the action at the top of the lane for Javier Castellanos. You know, inside, outside, uh, looked like it was partially stopped a couple of times. But coming off the maiden victory on February 5th into Stakes Company, a very, very nice score for the Todd Pletcher, Michael Tabor runner, the start of a good day for Javier Castellano. Seguea coming in off the Gasparilla Stakes at Tampa Bay, finishes second under Paco Lopez. And you heard the California Invader Melrose Woods finishes third after trying to make every poll a winning one in Saturday's Sun Coast. Up next, we're going to stay with the Phillies. This time, Phillies and Maris are going to go to the turf. This is going to be the Hillsborough and the winner of last year's Grade 1 Diana and recent stakes winner at Tampa Bay, Zagora for Chad Brown and Martin Schwartz, 4-5. to five. They're off and running in the Grade 3 Hillsboro. Up on the outside, unbridled humor is away alertly and gunning for the early lead. Megaspill now moves up. Far outside, Federation joins the top flight. Who Why is away with the top flight as well as sea level drive in the last turse away. Is the late running Snow Top Mountain. Under the wire for the first time. Long shot Megaspill now off to lead by two and a half. 
Unbridled humor is on the chase. Second, a gap of three. Seed level drive is toward the rail. Third, Federation in search of three wins in a row, racing along fourth. Who I and Leandro Goncalves with a ground saving trip fifth. Then it's a link farther back to the Endeavor winners. Zagora with clear racing room and a perfect spot on the outside. Then it's three links farther back to Denomination, followed by Gold Dioro. And the trailer is the Great Philly. Snowtop Mountain, a dozen links from front to back, up the back stretch at Megaspiel. And Scott Spieth off to lead by two. Unbridled humor is on the chase, second three parts of a link. Sea level drive is there toward the rail third. Federation is three wide and racing fourth. Who Y remains tucked in toward the rail fifth. Zagora from the outside and she's ready to pounce. Then it's a length and out farther back to denomination and now the pace quickens with three furlongs to run. Unbridled humor moves up on the outside. There goes Zagora with a quick turn of foot and Federation moves right with her. Two and a half lengths farther back. Megaspiel is now back to third as they turn into the stretch. Three sixteenths of a mile to run. Unbridled humor has the lead. Federation runs at her second. Zagora is down the center of the racetrack inside the final furlong. It's Zagora the outside. Federation is game, but it's down to the wire. It's Segura and Javier Castellano to take it going away by a length and a half. Very close for second between Federation and unbridled humor. And ladies and gentlemen, Martin Schwartz over the last, you know, five to seven years has purchased a couple of horses over in Europe, brought them to the United States, Phillies on the turf, and they have been from time to time outstanding, scintillating. And Zagora has started off her five-year-old campaign with two nice scores down at Tampa Bay. And we'll see what the rest of her campaign entails. But she did win the grade one Diana last summer at Saratoga at nearly six to one. And I think she might be better this year after adding the 14th running of the Hillsborough to her resume. Javier Castellano makes it two in a row on the show. This one was rather easy. I saw him shaking the whip, but I don't think he ever hurt her. Federation hit her, excuse me, not hurt her. Federation finishes second under Pablo Morales with unbridled humor checking in third. But Chad Brown sends out Segura two for two now this year. Up next, the Tampa Bay Derby, which has grown in magnitude of the national landscape over the last couple years. Grade two status certainly helps a uh, mile and a 16th. Softened up a little bit this year with mile and 16th races available to trainers at Gulfstream Park, including the Fountain of Youth. And Javier Castellano trying to make it three in a row. He is on the two to one favorite, Spring Hill Farm. Field of 11 are at the post. And they're off and running in the 32nd running of the Tampa Bay Derby. Prospective is away in good order and on the outside. There he goes. Cajun Charlie gunning right for the early lead. Fox Rule is away with a top flight as well as Tell All You Know. And the last horse away is Longshot Twin. Around the clubhouse turn as expected. Cajun Charlie and Tracy Bear tear away now to lead by four. Fox Rules is there second with Twin racing along third. Spring Hill Farm in a perfect spot on the outside for three parts of a length the late running prospective. He's much closer today with blinkers on, racing along fifth. Battle hardened, the Sam Davis winner is alongside him sixth. Then it's a gap of two, Chief Energy racing seventh. Golden ticket is toward the rail eighth. A length and a half farther back to Ravello's boy racing ninth. Then we go back to the gray horse, Cosetti, and the trader is twin. That's the 11 of them as they make their way to the far turn. Cajun Charlie is trying to take him start to finish. Fox Rules is down along the inner rail now, racing along second and prospective is into the the bed and now moving up to be third. Up on the far outside, that Spring Hill Farm. He's now coming into ride fourth. Golden ticket is fifth as they're midway in the turn. It's Prospective now going to the lead, but here's Spring Hill Farm being set down for the drive on the outside second. Cajun Charlie, he's seen enough and retreats to be third. Golden ticket and Manny Cruz ducked to the inside and he's finishing up nicely as they turn into the stretch. Here's Golden Ticket coming off the maiden win, moving up to challenge Prospecti for the lead. Spring Hill Farm is defeated inside the final for long. Prospecti feels the whip and battling back gamely. Golden Ticket is right back at him toward the rail. It's Prospecti to take it by a neck over a very game Golden Ticket. Cosetti runs on to be third. Spring Hill Farm is fourth. And running time on the board, 1.43 and 1. The 32nd running of the Tampa Bay Derby is in the books. And kudos to John Oxley and Mark Cassie. Talked about how Mr. Oxley, you know, 
about seven, eight years ago, those light blue and yellow silks all over Saratoga, but his operation has gone up to Woodbine with Mark Cassie, and they've had a good year, a little quieter for us, but a good year. And now Perspective, who added blinkers, scores the victory as the second choice at 3-1, to one, had drawn the tough number 11 post in the Sam Davis and was runner-up, gets the rail and scores in the Tampa Bay Derby. Golden Ticket finishes second, Cazzetti third. Now Spring Hill Farm finishes fourth at 2-1 to one as you were watching him run on the outside and Castellano was urging him at the half-mile pole. Two things I might add. First is I thought this horse would probably finish about ninth, continued on, and I thought finished <laughs> for a 2-1 to one favorite to run off the board. I thought Spring Hill Farm did okay coming into this race after being 2-2, two for two, odds on in the maiden and the entry-level allowance, now jump, jumping into two turns in a grade two. I thought the off-the-board finish for Spring Hill Farm was a better than looks. Uh, also, Take Charge Indy, who was the 3-1 to one morning line second choice, scratch out of this race, but a nice victory with the addition of blinkers to perspective. Now time to go over to Gulfstream Park, ladies and gentlemen, and the Swell Stakes, named after the 1984 winner of the Florida Derby and three-year-old champion of that year. The 29th running, and ever so lucky who was supposed to have his three-year-old debut a couple races back, is the 6-5 to five favorite. They're racing in the Swale. And it's Trini Berg who goes right out to take the early lead. On the far outside, Good Morning Diva came away well. And now rushing up between those two, Bahamian Squall is close up to the pace with Hello Prince behind them. Ever so lucky's not far behind. He's only two lengths off the lead and there's Silver Menace along the rail. Sevi has three and a half to make up early. Then Musical Flare to the inside and it's four and a half back to Quick Wit and Motor City together at the back of the field after a 22 and three first quarter. Trini Berg on top as they move into the far turn. Hello Prince three quarters of a length behind. Silver Menace has the rail. To the outside Bahamian Squall, ever so lucky fifth between those two. Good Morning Diva follows in sixth. Then Musical Flare, Sevy to the outside. Quick Wit and Motor City still trails the field. A 45 flat half mile. And Trini Berg and Willie Martinez have a two length lead. Hello Prince is second, Silver Man is third. Ever so lucky has his work cut out for him. He's still five lengths off the lead as Trini Berg comes to mid stretch three in front. Trini Berg all alone. And then it's Hello Prince, followed by Ever So Lucky. And on the far outside, Good Morning Diva. But Trini Berg has run away in the swale. He won it easily over Hello Prince. And then it was Ever So Lucky and Silver Menace. Trini Berg, first start since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Sprint. This is the horse we saw last summer at Saratoga at nearly 70 to 1 in the slop upset the grade one hopeful stakes, but a easy upset sixth length victory went to the front and improved the position under Willie Martinez winning the swell stakes as easily as could be. Finishing second is Hello Prince who comes out of the needle stakes, but previous to that had won two, two sprinting races, including the bird on the wire stakes at Calder. Ever so lucky who had missed the three-year-old debut a couple weeks ago First start since the uh, Kentucky Jockey Club on November 26th. Really just a comeback to the races effort for Jonathan Shepard at a bad 6-5 to five price. But Trini Berg looking magnificent when getting everything his own way in Saturday's swell stakes. Up next, the Gulfstream Park Handicap. Been around a long time, ladies and gentlemen. This was the 70th running. Used to be the premier distance race, handicap race, of the year at Gulfstream Park. Times have changed. It's now run out a mile, and I know we had a short field on Saturday afternoon, but it truly seems to have found its niche, the one-turn mile. And coming off the Sunshine Millions classic victory, the betters made Mucho Macho Man the 7-10 to 10 favorite. They're racing in the Gulfstream Park Handicap. And it's Tackleberry who goes straight out to take the early lead. 
Cage and Breeze away running in second. Clean shot third, so the two long shots right next to Tackleberry. While Mucho Macho Man will sit in fourth early just ahead of Jackson Bend, who's last as they leave the shoot, but he's not far behind. He's only three lengths off of front running Tackleberry, who completes an opening quarter mile in 24 and two fifth seconds. And Rajiv Mirage and Tackleberry lead the way, but now Ramon Dominguez moves Mucho Macho Man right alongside, and he's only a half length behind down the back stretch. And then it's clean shot, Cajun Breeze, and Jackson Bend is last four lengths off the lead as they head to the half mile pole. Tackle Berry ran 47 flat for a half mile. Mucho Macho Man breathing down his neck on the outside. They are now right together. Jackson Bend has taken third. He's two lengths off the lead with three furlongs left. Cajun Breeze and clean shot are next. And Mucho Macho Man has taken the lead. And he's still in hand as they arrive at the quarter pole. Tackleberry fights on from the inside. Jackson Bend hard ridden in third, and they're into the stretch. And it's Mucho Macho Man. Tackleberry continues to fight him with everything he's got. Mucho Macho Man in front, though. Tackleberry. Jackson Bend is third in the center of the track. It is Mucho Macho Man. Tackleberry and Jackson Bend. And Mucho Macho Man has won the Gulfstream Park handicap. Tackleberry lasted for second over Jackson Bend and Cajun Breeze was fourth. Well, a very nice addition going to Mucho Macho Man, who's now won three in a row, a brilliant training job by Kathy Ritbow. And, and kudos to the betters who picked out the right horse. Ramon Dominguez scores the two-length victory over Tackleberry, who has such a strong affinity for Gulfstream Park. And Jackson Bend runs third as the second choice at 7-5. to five. A couple thoughts on, on, on this race, short field, Pace to me was everything. We understand the teletimer at, at Gulfstream Park running the mile. The second quarter mile is, I think, when I always faster than the opening quarter mile. But if you take, took quick notes of the teletimer, the third quarter mile, 22 and 4, ladies and gentlemen. And that's when Jackson Bend would, try, would have been trying to cut in to the leader's lead. And they go 22 and change. Tough for Jackson Bend, uh, did finish up nicely, but I think after, for this level of racehorses, very, very slow opening quarter mile and the half mile in 47.04, everybody started running blazingly fast in the third quarter mile, and Jackson Bend wasn't able to get where he needed to be to finish them off in the lane. Very, very strategic, interesting race, but mucho macho, man. Going very, very well now. Kudos to Kathy Ritbo getting this uh, horse back who ran through much of the rigors as a three-year-old but seems to have improved with maturation. Sunday afternoon, a couple of stakes races. First off, three-year-olds on the turf and the much-anticipated return of Dulahan. But if you've been watching turf racing down in uh, Gulfstream Park, you could have seen that how great would be the favorite, maybe not quite the seven to 10 favorite. All in line. They're racing in the Palm Beach. Coldport stumbled a bit coming out of there. It's how great on the inside out for the lead. Chaba far outside, Scorcher right there with Coldport in between horses. Dulahan is fifth early and taken in hand three and a half lengths off the lead. Argentine Tango trails as long shot Scorcher gives early pressure to the favorite, how great and Scorcher on the outside is the leader. How great second to the inside. These two neck apart on the lead through a 23 and four first quarter. Chaba is running in third and down on the inside. Coldport is fourth. Dulahan comfortably placed in fifth to the back stretch. Five lengths off the lead and four and a half clear of Argentine Tango. They make their way to the back stretch now and Scorcher is the leader. Going to kick on by about a length. How great, second to the inside. And then it's Chaba, followed by Coldport. Dulahan continues to travel very well. He's three and a half lengths off the lead, and another five back to Argentine Tango. Half mile was in 47 and two. And it is still Scorcher a neck in front. How great, rating on the rail, a half length behind. And then it is 
Chaba in third, followed by Colport. Doolahan now being nudged along on the far outside. Argentine Tango trails after three quarters in 111 and two. And they make their way to the top of the stretch. And Kent DeSormo is letting Doolahan loose now. And he goes four wide, while Howe Great cuts the corner. And the two of them will come into the stretch together. Chaba running a big one right between them. Howe Great's the leader. He came up the rail and he's in front. Doolahan chasing him gamely on the outside. Chaba third. How great. And Doolahan won two in the Palm Beach. And how great wins again. Doolahan was second. Chaba third. And then Argentine Tango. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how great I think got everything his way. Uh, recent form, inside trip. Doolahan was the second choice at two to one. Got all the worst of it, but if you're Dale Romans and others who didn't bet on Doolan, I think you have to like this return to the races. Now, how great Team Valor, Graham Motion, uh, the Palm Beach Stakes, this graded earnings goes towards a start in the Kentucky Derby, but to me, how great has been razor sharp on the turf, even though what does that mean for a three-year-old Colt in the first two seasons uh, of the year? Doolahan. Uh, they seem to be looking forward to getting uh, back on the dirt after running in the juvenile, but a very, very nice race. Return to the races for Tulahan, and uh, how great to me has had some terrific, terrific early turf races on his resume. Johnny V gets the victory in Sunday's Palm Beach. Now time for the three-year-old Phillies to take to the turf, and the here comes the bride. 9 to 10, day at the spa. They're racing and the here comes the bride. Frolic's Revenge had a good beginning. Day at the Spa is going to go right after the lead early. There goes Day at the Spa right alongside of Frolic's Revenge. Three lengths back to Northern Passion running in third early. And of the dance, whole lot is shaken next. And then back to Regalo Mia. Al Musafa is next, and last of all is Dixie Strike as they move into that first turn. Frolic's Revenge is the leader by three quarters of a length. The big favorite, Day at the Spa, kept close to her second on the outside. The first quarter was 24 seconds flat. Whole lot of shaking his third at the rail, two lengths off the lead. And then it's Northern Passion. And of the dance right up alongside, Regalo Mia is down at the rail and five and a half lengths off the lead. Then it's Al Musafa. And last of all is Dixie Strike up the back stretch. Frolic's Revenge, a half length on top of Day at the Spa through a 48 and three half mile. These two go at it, two lengths clear of whole lot of shaken running in third, Regalo Mia's fourth, and then it's Northern Passion and of the dance at Al Musafa, and last is Dixie Strike. They move for the turn. Frolic's Revenge the leader. Day at the Spa, half length behind. These two right together, whole lot of shaken is third, three quarters, one, twelve, and three. And then Regalo Mia to the inside. Northern Passion sent along. Dixie strikes going up on the far outside. Al Musafa saves ground. And Anne of the Dance, they're into the stretch. And it's Day at the Spa. Day at the Spa's taking the lead. Regalo Mia runs after her on the outside. Al Musafa kicks it in late. Farthest out, Dixie strike. Day at the Spa reaching for the wire. Regalo Mia chasing her home. Day at the Spa, too good. Wins the Here Comes the Bride. Regalo Mia was second. And then Al Musafa and Dixie strike. And day at the spa, well, it was no day at the beach at 9 to 10 for Javier Castellano. Chad Brown winning on both coasts of Florida this weekend. You may have seen a little incident at the top of the stretch, and I, I thought it was a little incident, but Johnny V taken down with Al, Al Musafa, who was making an inside-outside move, but did make uh, Northern Pash Passion pull up, and the stewards did disqualify Al Musafa, putting Dixie Strike up to third. One of those examples where the horse uh, elevated to a, a position was not the injured party, but Regalo Mia, who was a neck third in the Florida Oaks Miss, re recently finishes second at 11-1 to 1 with Dixie Strike being put up to third. Day at the Spa, who won the debut sprinting at the Spa last summer. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have races from the fairgrounds. Oaklawn Park and Laurel.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Horses and Courses. Now time to go down to the fairgrounds. Two three-year-old turf stakes races, both of them being run at the distance of about seven and a half furlongs. Up first, the Allen Lacombe Memorial. And they're off. And it was a good start for Spun Ribbon, that filly who was reluctant to load. A good start, too, for Citizen Advocate. Quickly, here's Queen Toyota, Devious Intent, and Rainbow Blossom. A close fifth on return at the first turn. Three across the course. Devious Advocate uh, between horses Spun Ribbon and on the outside, Queen Toyota. Rainbow Blossom right there running in fourth. I think I saw Putty Cat fifth and settled there. Then Devious Intent in sixth, Ms. Ida, pulling hard from seventh between fillies. Kiss in the Forest is next, followed out wide by Firehouse Red, and settled back in last by Robbie Alvarado. Robbie Joe trails an opening quarter in 25. And four fifth seconds, Queen to Utah, and at the inside, Citizen Advocate vying for it at the half mile pole. Citizen Advocate tugs in front of Queen to Utah as they go to the far side of the fairgrounds course. Spun Ribbon, Rainbow Blossom a close fourth. I think I saw a putty cat closer toward the inside. Ms. Ida right there, too. Devious Intent will be wide at both turns now, under three furlongs left. Then Firehouse Red out wide on the course, Kiss in the Forest, and Robbie Joe has eight lengths to come. And will be forced wide around Phillies. Robbie Joe on the orange cap tip wide, but on the move past the quarter pole. Half mile and 50, and four fifth seconds fanned across the course. Citizen Advocate in front, but here comes the pack. Ms. Ida, Firehouse Red, Rainbow Blossom, Queen to Utah. I think I saw a putty cat. Robbie Joe on the fourth outside. Inside the final half furlong. Ms. Ida strikes the front for Sean Bridgerton. Ms. Ida to win it. Firehouse Red was second. Citizen Advocate just third. Then Queen to Utah. Robbie Joe, Rainbow Blossom. I think I saw a putty cat. Spun Ribbon, Devious Intent, and Kiss in the Forest was last. At the top of the stretch, you might have thought it was any one of seven could win it. And then in the middle of the stretch, you might have been thinking any one of three or four could win it. But at the end of the day, at $24.80, it was Ms. Ida going out for Steve Margolis and Sean Bridgeman. They score the upset victory with Firehouse Red and Citizen Advocate finishing second and third. Robbie Joe, who was the six to five favorite off of a two-for-two two turf career, drew the inside well back early, got the overland route, just couldn't make up ground as they were speeding away in the stretch of the Allen Lacombe. Now time for three-year-olds going seven and a half furlongs in the black gold and the nine-to-five favorite with the addition of blinkers, Hammer's Throw. The game. And the raw for the black gold stakes. Hero of Order, Volk Sharp. Wayward Sailor coming up on the outside of the red cap. Hammer's Terror forward be placed to the turn. Here's the inside Pure Tactics and Buck Carter right there too as they move around the turn. Hero of Order in front. Hero of Order leads by three quarters of length to Wayward Sailor and Hammer's Terror is a close up third. Sean Bittrahan fourth with Pure Tactics going to the back of the course. Buck Carter is running in fifth by a length and a half. And then Icon Ike out wide on the course. Probably will be closer toward the rail. Placing up the backstretch, Alexander the Great, Cape Town Devil, Ted's Folly is saving ground, and Adina's Chance Trails. The opening quarter, 25 and 4 for seconds, Hero of Order the pilot with four furlongs to go. Hero of Order being tracked by Wayward Sever. Harris Terror getting a solid run. Pure Tactics right there, too. Rock Carter is fifth and four from the front. Three more to Icon Ike, two more to Bravo Habibi, Cape Town Devil, Alexander the Great, Adina's Chance up one spot. Ted's Folly now trails. Hero of Order coming toward the quarter pole. Hero of Order, Bach Harder with a big sweeping move. And Hammer's Terror in the white cap. Wayward Sailors fight there too. Pure Tactics, Iconic was spun wide. They come into the final four line and a half. Hammer's Terror between horses. Hero of Order under pressure. Rock Carter, Icon Ike, and Pure Tactics right there too in tight quarters. Down to the final 16th, Icon Ike. Hero of Order is staying on. Pure Tactics between horses. Hammer's Terror and Rock Carter, Icon Ike, and Rosie Lopovnik at 11 to 1. Icon Ike has won it from Hero of Order, Pure Tactics, first for fourth. Hammer's Terror and Rock Carter in the black gold. And about 66 minutes later, Rosie the Pravnik gets the victory going about seven and a half furlongs on the fairgrounds. Turf course icon Mike returning $25 for Larry Jones. The nice upset victory from an outside post position. And you might have seen 
bumping in the stretch, and it would have been intriguing for me. The second bump by Hero of Order, to me, definitely meant a disqualification. I'm not so sure they would have gotten away with the first bump in the middle of the stretch, but the second one, I think, made it a no-brainer for Hero of Order to be disqualified from second and placed fourth behind the favorite, not Hero Hammer's Throw, but Hammer's Terror, who was adding blinkers coming out of the LeComp, gets moved up to third with a disqualification. But Icon Ike, the upset victory in Saturday's Black Gold. Saturday afternoon at Laurel Park, they ran the Conover Stakes, and breaking from the rail, the 6-5 to five favorite, Bold Affair. And they're off in the Conniver. Heaven's Voice and Terra Rolla and sounded out showing speed and Bold Affair there and flashing up on the inside. Bold Affair right there and taking that lead early. Bold Affair is up top already in that opening for a long opening. Two to sound it out in second. Terra Rolla third. Heaven's Voice. Races fourth in between horses. Lily Couture's access to Charlie and with an early move in between horses and slicing through to the inside. Access to Charlie down inside now. Racing third position heading up the back stretch. Overnight fling followed by Baltimore Bell who's in between horses some seven or eight off that lead. Back to music please. And Art of the Hunt is the trailer. Heading into the far turn. Solid pace out there as Bold Affair leads the way. Bold Affair with a three length lead on Terra Rolla. Sound it out. Inside access to Charlie is fourth. Baltimore Bell is in the clear. Three wide trying to rally now. Five or six lengths from the front. Followed by Heaven's Voice and Music Please is very wide. Top of the stretch trying to come with a rally. Five deep. They make the turn for home and it's Bold Affair. Bold Affair is toying with them. Bold Affair by five from Terra Rolla in second. Baltimore Bell is in third. But look at Bold Affair. Bold Affair popped the latches on top. Full of runs. Still got plenty of run in the final furlong. Baltimore Bell giving chase to Bold Affair in a dazzling performance and the Conniver Stakes, and Bold Affair is much the best, and she's coming home from Baltimore, Bell second, and Music Please is third, Heaven's Voice, and then Terra Rolla. The Conniver Stakes, they, you know, even breaking from the rail, going seven ace at Laurel, uh, Bold Affair made six to five look attractive under Abel Castellano. Uh, Daily Racing Form chart reads that the start was 10th, a quarter of a mile into the race was up by four. Final winning margin, six and a half lengths. Baltimore Bell finishes second. Music Please checks in third. Howard Wolfendale, father of Maggie Wolfendale, sends out the easy winner in Saturday's Conniver Stakes. Time to go out to Oaklawn Park, ladies and gentlemen. Two stakes races to bring you up first. Three-year-old fillies in the Honey Bee on fire baby, two to five. He walks up quietly. They're all set. And they're off. Amy's Dini breaks like a shot right to the front. Rocket 21 has good early speed. And Colonial Empress comes out in third. Our domain fourth. And on fire baby has to go wide into this first turn. Forgotten People is five lengths off the lead. Silver Hustler, who wasn't that quick out of there, is now just about five lengths off them as well. And Inca Miss is the trailer. Heading to the sixth furlong point, and Amy's Dini going very comfortably up top, leads by a half length to Rocket 21. On fire, baby, in a good striking spot from third, and Colonial Empress is tucked in fourth, only two lengths off the leader. Then it's our domain, inside Silver Hustler, four off the lead, another three to Forgotten People, and Inca Miss. A half mile from home in the honeybee. And Amy's Dini still bounding along on fire. Baby coming after her from second. Rocket 21 is asked to keep pace third. Colonial Empress on the inside fourth. Three lengths off this leader. Silver Hustler moving up now with a nice bid. There goes Silver Hustler up to claim third. Our domain is eight lengths off the dueling leaders. Then Forgotten People and Inca Miss. Amy's Dini trying to fend off on fire, baby. These two arrive at the quarter pole together. Amy's Dini, a tough customer. On fire, babies up alongside. Silver Hustler moves into third. Colonial Empress in fourth. And Amy's Dini is running a stellar race on the inside of On Fire Baby. They're head and head with a furlong left to go. And On Fire Baby takes the lead coming to the 16th pole. Amy's Dini, valiant in defeat. 
But on fire, baby gives Anita Colley the perfect birthday present as she wins the honeybee. Amy's Deanie second, Colonial Empress finished third in front of Silver Hustler. On fire, baby. First time Lasix exiting, taking on the boys in the Smarty Jones. Won the Pocahontas in the Goldenrod at Churchill Downs, wrapping up the two year old season. Runs down Amy's Dini to score by two lengths. Have to figure that the next stop will be the fantasy stakes for this offspring of Smoke Glacklin. Glacklin Colonial Express Empress finishes third in Saturday's Honeybee. Also on the card on Saturday afternoon, the prep race for the Oak Lawn Handicap, the Razorback. Now you had the winner of the recently run Essex Stakes, Alternation, and Tapazar coming in from the West Coast. They made Tapazar the even money favorite. And they're off in the Razorback to a picture perfect beginning. It happened again. Alternation somehow finds himself on the lead early. Color Me Blue, and now Tapazar sprints up on the outside. They're followed by Shredded Edge, fifth and about seven lengths off the lead. And Win Willie, as expected, is the trailer. Alternation is a narrow leader with Tapazar lapped on him second. A break of four, back to It Happened Again, third. Color Me Blue is fourth, five lengths off the lead. He's another half dozen clear of Shredded Edge. And Win Willie is galloping along at the back of the pack. The pace is moderate and Alternation leads by three quarters of a length. Tapazar is tugging in second. Five lengths back, Color Me Blue joins It Happened Again. They're now eight in front of Shredded Edge, who's four clear of Win Willie. They're a half mile from home in the Razorback Handicap. Luis Quinones has alternation in front. Cory Nakatani and Tapazar a neck back second. Three more to It Happened Again third. Color Me Blue inches up a closer fourth. Still five back to Shredded Edge, and Win Willie is well out of it. They're approaching the quarter pole. Alternation, Tapazar, they've been one, two throughout. Alternation has been cruising every step of the way. Color Me Blue is in third. It happened again, ask for more. Shredded Edge, Win Willie still 12 off the lead as they head to the furlong pole. Here's the race, Alternation and Tapazar with Color Me Blue three lengths back in third. They're coming toward the 16th pole. Alternation is still clear by a length and a half. Tapazar has tried his best, but he cannot match strides with Alternation who turns in another stellar performance, winning the Razorback in front-running fashion. Tapazar was second, Color Me Blue finished third. And Donnie Van Himmel sends out alternation to add the Razorback handicap to his resume. Tapazar, the favorite, splits the exacta coming out of the Essex Stakes with Color Me Blue finishing third at 14 to one, alternation returning. $4.60, making every poll a winning one as the second choice. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, two from Santa Anita and the Big A. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time to go out to San Anita for the 75th running of the San Felipe, a grade two for three-year-olds. Bodie Meister, 
recent winner of his maiden special weight, the two to one slight favorite over Creative Cause. Set. And away they go. Bodie Meister got a flyer, but American Act wants the lead, and American Act has ridden along, sprints away to lead Bodie Meister early. Tis Point is coming over third, just alongside comes Groove and Solo. Crate, of course, settling back in fifth, four lengths off them. They're going fast up front, racing in behind that. We have a midnight transfer, gold cap at the rail. Liaison is a good seven off them. Empire way on the far side. At the back, Rousing, Sermon, and Blingo, they nine off the leader. On to the back stretch they go, and American Act taking a hold of the bet. He's keen to go on, leads three parts of a length. Bodie Meister is right there, second. Down at the rail comes Groove and Solo. Tiz Point is now pulling on the far side. Tiz Point up to third. Creative Cause in a beautiful spot, fifth, and Creative Cause going along well. Three lengths off these leaders. Down at the rail, we have Midnight Transfer. Up alongside of that comes Empire Way, then Blingo. Behind that, Rousing Sermon. Liaison is last. Seven lengths would cover the lot. Into the turn they go, and American Act's taken on early as Bodie Meister kicks for home, and Bodie Meister the new leader now, Tis Point on the far side. Now Creative Cause moving in, he has to go four wide, but Creative Cause moving ominously on the far side. Midnight transfer running a big one in the gold cap, and Blingo is winding up from last. Top of the lane now, and Creative Cause made this huge run. Will he go on with it? Bodie Meister, Creative Cause shifting ground, but has the lead. Bodie Meister's right there, midnight transfer coming on from third. Homeward bound, Creative Cause, Bodie Meister's come right back. Both of them shifting around pretty badly. Creative Cause, Bodie Meister, Creative Cause, Creative Cause has won the San Felipe. Bodie Meister was second, midnight transfer third, and liaison ran on for four. Well, we had thought coming out of the San Vicente that Creative Cause had put in a nice return to the races in his three-year-old debut, and he had to have his running shoes. He took the overland route. You heard Trevor Denman call him four wide on the turn under, under Joel Rosario as the second choice. Bodie Meister, in only his third career start, I thought raced very well. The only horse up on the early speed that stuck around, midnight transfer, a nice effort to finish third. So as of this point, I think we saw one of the better, if not the finest uh, three-year-old prep to date, a brilliant addition of the San Felipe with creative cause. Second start of the year for Mike Harrington. Mike Harrington scoring the victory. Uh, the other Mike Harrington runner, Empire Way, who I sort of fancy a brutal, brutal ninth, but creative cause. Back on the beam, winning the San Felipe. Sunday afternoon, we had Phillies and Maris sprinting in the Las Flores Stakes. Six to five, Izzy rules. And uh... Way they go all came out well. Izzy rules very, very fast, and Izzy rules kicks away early. Veloce Canzoni settling in second. Home sweet Aspen between horses on the far side. Spectacular sky. Great Heart is in fifth. Four lengths off the leaders, and another three back to She's Cheeky. Past the five eights they go, and Izzy rules a length and a half in front. Veloce Canzoni's on the inside. Home sweet Aspen between them. Now Spectacular Sky takes second. Spectacular Sky cutting into that leader's lead. Great Hot is still in fifth. Four and a half off the leaders, and two and a half to She's Cheeky. They run past the three-eighths pole, and Izzy Rules kicks away again. Izzy Rules opens up by two. Spectacular Skies chasing from the second spot, then home sweet Aspen. Veloce Canzoni's losing ground. Great Hot now seven off the leaders, and She's Cheeky's running on from last. They're at the top of the lane, and Izzy Rules now comes under a ride. Izzy Rules leads it by almost two, though. Spectacular Sky, Great Hot, and She's Cheeky running on from behind. Izzy Rules digs deep, finds more. She's got her ears pinned and coming home very tenaciously. And Izzy Rules is going to take the last flurries. Izzy Rules and Edwin Maldonado start his performance today. They went all the way to win by about four. Spectacular sky, she's cheeky and great hot win X. Well, forget those teletimer times, but how about these? 2173, 4331. 107 and 4, Edwin Maldonado gets his first stakes win at Santa Anita on the 6 to 5 favorite. Izzy Rules now won four in a row, including entry level allowance, non winners of two other than, and now the Las Flores at Santa Anita. Spectacular Sky finishes second with She's Cheeky checking in third 
in Sunday's Las Flores Stakes. Two stakes races on Saturday afternoon from the Big A to bring you up first, the 20th running of the Sakata Stakes, the 1-4 to four favorite, Agave Kiss. And they're off. Agave Kiss away well and out for the lead, but an early challenge from the inside from Ali Dollar. Now Agave Kiss gets clear by three quarters of a length. Ali Dollar at the rail, Corderosa on the outside, and Natara in between those two. A six length break back to Princess Rihanna, who trails the field in fifth. Agave Kiss leads by two lengths after an opening quarter mile in 23 seconds. And the speedy Agave Kiss now opens up a three-length lead going into the far turn. Corderosa, Ali Dollar, heads apart. Natara is back racing in fourth. And farther back, Princess Rayana. Agave Kiss with a five-length advantage coming to the top of the stretch. Corderosa is on the outside of Ali Dalla. Agave Kiss ran the half in 46 and one-fifth seconds. She's got a six-length lead. Corderosa now a clear second over Ali Darla. There's an eighth of a mile to the finish in the Sakata, and Agave Kiss leads by five or to Corderosa. It's Agave Kiss, and she's going to win her fourth straight here. She adds the grade three Sakata to her resume at the end, one by three. In one eleven and three, Corderosa was second, and Ali Darla finished third. And Agave Kiss going out for Rudy Rodriguez, Flying Z Racing Stables. This New York Red now wins the Sakata after winning the Ruthless. The 3 to 5 favorite goes off at 1 to 4, makes it look easy under Ryan Curlotolo, returning $2.50 in the Sakata. One more stakes race to bring you on the weekend. Used to be called the Swift Stakes, run for the 111th time. This is three year olds in the Cappy Capicella, 2 to 1 favorite. Hardened Wildcat. And they're off. Bigger Thy Neighbor shows first. How do I win? Came away well down at the rail. On the outside is Copy My Swagger in third. Then it's Christopher's Joy in fourth. Ancient Rome runs in fifth. It's four lengths. Hardened Wildcat will be the early trailer in sixth. How do I win has now taken the lead from Bigger Thy Neighbor. Far outside, Ancient Rome in third, Christopher's Joy towards the rail, and in between horses, Copy My Swagger, six lengths to Harden Wildcat, opening quarter mile in 23 and one-fifth seconds. How do I win? By a head, Bigger Thy Neighbor now moves right alongside, and Ancient Rome just off those front runners in third. Break of two to Christopher's Joy and Copy My Swagger. Harden Wildcat remains at the back as the field enters the stretch, the half mile, 46 and three fifth seconds. Bigger than a neighbor, how do I win? Here comes Harden Wildcat on the far outside. They pass the eighth pole. It's bigger than a neighbor. Harden Wildcat on the outside. How do I win down at the rail? It's Harden Wildcat to take the lead and win the Capicella from last to first. Bigger than a neighbor was second. How do I win, finish third. And yes, those are the familiar purple and black silks of New Farm, but not for Ben Perkins Jr., but for Chad Brown, who gets his third winner on this week's edition of HNC, Harden Wildcat. The 2-1 to one favorite now 3-for-3 three three after a fifth-place debut under Junior Alvarado scores by just under two lengths. Beggar Thy Neighbor finishes second. And how do I win the early pace setter and second choice in the wagering Holds on for third. That wraps up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your racing. We'll see you back here Monday morning to do it all over.